Hi, so last video I said something along the lines of symmetrical style maps often get called out for being boring, and then I didn't say any more. But now I can finally go back to this Wikipedia page. If we scroll down, you'll find these sentences. Opposed to bilateral symmetry is the tendency for excessive symmetry to be perceived as boring or uninteresting. People prefer shapes that have some symmetry, but enough complexity to make them interesting. There is another whole Wikipedia page on a theory, but those two sentences sum it up pretty well. What does complexity mean anyway? A quick Google search says that it means consisting of many different and connected parts. Here are examples of what this means in terms of mapping. It's pretty clear that Alakat's map is much more interesting to play. The spacing varies depending on the intensity of the song, and the patterns flow in all directions, while DJ Pop's version is restricted to flowing up, down, left and right, and following very strict distance snapping rules. The larger variety of patterns makes Alakat's version much more fun to play overall. For the case of symmetry, when you place one object, there's very little choice for where you can place the next object, meaning there's less variety for patterns overall. So complexity in mapping refers to having a variety of pattern choices throughout the map. OS is a two-dimensional game after all, so there's no reason why you should restrict yourself with the directions of your patterns. Restricting your patterns makes your map become predictable or feel repetitive, which in turn makes it become boring and stale. You get no mental stimulation from seeing the same stuff over and over again. That isn't to say though that repetition could be a good thing when the music calls for it. As I keep saying, aesthetics is a visual response, and since vision is our most powerful sense, repeated patterns stick out much more than repeated rhythms. Using a variety of patterns through the map keeps the map interesting by constantly feeding the player new things to play. However, adding variety does not mean disregarding consistency. There becomes a point where too much variety becomes just senseless chaos. Using too many different patterns to map the same sounds just stops making sense after a while and doesn't reflect the music anymore. Most songs usually have some repetitive elements in them anyway, and repetitive style mapping is perfectly acceptable here. Misleading the players and mapping the same rhythms with wildly different patterns can look bad, or it's just outright frustrating to play. So overall, you'll want to use a variety of different patterns throughout the whole map to keep it interesting, but balance it with enough consistency through specific sections to make it still reflect the song. So now would be the time where I would give some examples, but that's kind of difficult. Originally, this video was supposed to be about patterns that don't follow typical symmetry, and why non-symmetry keeps the map interesting. But there's so many possibilities for everything that isn't symmetry that it doesn't really make sense to talk about it. All it takes to make a map interesting is to not over-restrict yourself in your pattern placement. So in the end, I've concluded that, although symmetrical patterns can and do look good, that doesn't mean you should restrict yourself to solely mapping symmetrical shapes, as the end result can look pretty stale. But really, I could just be overcomplicating this whole ideal.